Pakistan. The harassment I've experienced at the HEC from top levels of management include my whistleblower complaint to White House Deputy Chief of Staff Rob Neighbors was leaked to my manager, Sherry Williams, who stated in writing that she was contacting me on behalf of Acting Secretary Gibson and Mr. Rob Neighbors. Neither Mr. Gibson nor Mr. Neighbors have responded to this fact. My employment records were illegally altered by CBO Workforce Management Director Joyce Dieters. I was illegally placed on a permanent work detail by Assistant Deputy Undersecretary Philip Matkowski and Acting Chief Business Officer Stephanie Martin. I was placed on involuntary administrative leave, curiously at the same time the OIG investigation was taking place in Atlanta by Acting HEC Director Greg Becker. Unfortunately, my experience is not unique at VA. Darren and Eileen Owens, who work at the Atlanta VA Medical Center, have experienced the same retaliation for reporting medical errors and patient neglect, as well as misconduct by senior VA police officials. Our local 518 union president, Daphne Ivory, is routinely harassed as a direct consequence of assisting me and other disabled federal employees with retaliatory action by members of management. Mr. Owens, Mrs. Owens, Ms. Ivory are all veterans. In fact, over 50% of the staff that works at the HEC are disabled veterans. In 2000, allegations surfaced that applications for VA health care were being shredded at the HEC under the direction of the HEC director and deputy director Ms. Kimberly Hughes, former Associate Director for Informatics, and her team began to investigate this allegation. Her team discovered nearly 2,000 applications that were reported as being processed that did not appear as new enrollments in the enrollment system. Ms. Hughes' investigation was abruptly closed by the HEC Director's Office. She was also subjected to harassment and intimidation because she dared to advocate for veterans. The whistleblower statements I have provided to the committee were also provided to the OIG and are more relevant to the committee than many may realize. I urge additional review of those whistleblower statements. In addition to providing specific examples of whistleblower harassment to the committee, I hope my testimony provides some insight to three key issues VA management fails to address. Reckless waste of federal funds and causing greater backlog of enrollment applications for the sole purpose of achieving performance goals. Why there is resistance to implementing proper and effective processing and reporting systems and the source of the resistance as addressed previously by Dr. Draper during her testimony. And the need to remove ineffective managers and the critical need for the VA Management Accountability Act to be fully implemented. Thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Davis. If you would uh, explain a, a little bit further the information you provided to uh, Rob Neighbors, uh, who was detailed from the White House over to VA that led to uh, adverse employment action taken against you. Yes, I contacted Mr. Neighbors about four weeks ago. Um, as the point of contact for the White House, I wanted him to be aware of what was going on in our office. A lot of attention has been placed on scheduling, but it's important to understand if, you do, if you're not enrolled, you're not going to be placed on the schedule. I wanted him to know about shortcomings with the enrollment system, a system that many of you have talked about we have spent millions of dollars on, and yet we're still back at square one with these VA systems. I also reached out to him about a Medicare Part D marketing initiative by VA to encourage senior citizens who are veterans to drop their subsequent companion Medicare insurance and enroll in VA. That was problematic. Because if you know, as you know, if you enroll in VA, you can only use the pharmacy at VA. You have to use your VA doctor. Many of our most vulnerable veterans were not aware of that and could be confused and cancel their supplemental Medicare insurance and end up being stuck in the donut hole in the backlog. I also contacted 
uh, Mr. Neighbors, about the continued mismanagement of VA health programs managed by the HEC and the Chief Business Office under the direction of Mr. Philip Mankowski and Lynn Harbin. After sending that information to Mr. Neighbors, I did not receive a response. I subsequently contacted the Office of Deputy Chief of Staff, Anita Breckenridge. I also did not receive a response until after receiving notification from Ms. Sherry Williams that she was contacting me on behalf of the Acting Secretary and Mr. Rob Neighbors. This surprised me that Ms. Williams would do this because she is a former OIG official. To this date, no action has been taken to reprimand Ms. Williams for her behavior. This goes to the very heart of the question whether or not it's allowed to police itself and whether or not an outside agency should be brought in to fully conduct an investigation to the actions taken at VA. The last thing I will say is I did receive an email from the White House Office of White House Counsel directing me to contact the Office of Special Counsel. Well, if that was the official position from the White House, there would have been no need for anyone to contact Ms. Williams about my complaint. 